Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> it's always very difficult to uh, talk about virtual reality because things seem to go so fast uh, that they change almost every day, every week. So where I stand today as a writer and director and producer for um, virtual reality is in, the, uh, in a sort of a maelstrom of questions that I ask myself. And I'll just, I'll just mention a few. I discovered virtual reality as I was a flat um, film producer at Arte, and I got involved when I started discovering how many talented people were starting to um, venture in completely new grounds of storytelling, which is interactive storytelling in many different ways, using the web, using game, but also now virtual reality. We know that, of course, having the viewer at the heart of the story world, in the middle, immersed with the characters, with the context, breaks the fourth wall, the traditional setup uh, that separates us from the fiction world. By breaking that fourth wall, we need to decide who is the viewer, what kind of presence do we give to the viewer. There's this whole field that I call presence design, which is fascinating in the sense that when you decide as a writer for VR that the experience you're providing your viewer is going to be defined by a certain number of contextual elements, um, you need to very precisely write what is the nature of the presence of the viewer. Does he or she have a body? If he or she has a body, whose body is it? If you don't have a body, are you seen by the others or are you perceived by the characters? Do they ignore you? Can you interact with them? All these questions are incredibly new in terms of writing stories. Um, there are many things that a VR director needs to take into account. Um, presence is one, but spatial articulation of actions is another one which is very tricky. When in flat movies you can decide what you are showing the spectator, because basically you're just showing, selecting a, a section of reality within a rectangle frame, in VR you need to design the uh, story world in 360. Therefore, you have the option to offer different actions or different facets of one same story at the same time, knowing that your viewer will only be watching in one direction at a time. So maybe leaving out um, part of the plot that you are showing within one same scene. And seeing, since saying, since we don't have to make the decision of which rectangle frame we're going to select from the reality we want to show, do we as directors still have a role? Do we still have a point of view since basically we're showing everything, the whole sphere around us? And what's interesting is that in these discussions, I find that what needs to happen to understand that there is a point of view in VR filmmaking, the shift needs to happen that you shift from thinking rectangles to thinking spheres. And when you choose the sphere that you're going to be placing your viewer at the heart of, um, that is your point of view, that is your art. You need to decide what sphere you're going, you're going to show. That is a very tricky um, thing to handle for a director and particularly letting go of the obsession of controlling what your viewer is going to be doing. I think we need to do almost a psychoanalytical revolution in the way we as directors and authors think of our relationship to the viewer and to the story. We have to accept that within the different setups that we are creating within one same environment, um, our viewer will have to come back to see all of it or will have to choose one of the actions that we have designed. Um, this, is, this is quite 
clear, I find, in documentary films. Um, in fiction, in drama films, you it's up to you, the writer, to decide whether you're going to have different focuses within the same scene in 360 degrees. You know that your viewer is not going to see both at the same time and therefore maybe miss some pieces of the plot that will enlighten his understanding of what's actually going on. So in documentary, what you have is a situation where you can really um, give the viewer the opportunity to choose exactly the same way he or she would in real life what they are going to decide to focus on. That immersive, uh, the immersive nature of the environment in this case forces the director to accept the fact that not everything he or she has designed will be seen. Um, that also has an impact on the viewer's behavior. It's very interesting to see that in VR there are really two kinds of viewership. There's the the viewer uh, who is a false victim to the FOMO syndrome, fear of missing out, end up having these spectators that are constantly moving their head around and being incredibly um, active in trying not to miss anything that might be happening in the, in the 360 uh, sphere. The other kind are viewers who feel perfectly comfortable to just sit and stay focused on one part of the action in the sphere uh, when they like it and they will miss the rest but they don't mind. Editing is another question that comes up very often about VR. Is there such a thing as editing when uh, basically in a dialogue, for instance, you don't need to film one side and then cut to the next side of the conversation. In VR, you get them both at the same time and it's up to the viewer to go back and forth between two characters, but then you need to make the decision of where you're placing the camera. The camera placement in VR is essential because that's where the point of view of the viewer will be. And by the way, um, one of the uh, mistakes I think we've been making in these first couple years of creating work for VR is that we think that since the viewer is going to be at the heart of the, uh, the context that we're showing, the story world, Subjective point of view is key, and we see a lot of VR films where the point of view of the viewer is the point of view of a character, and the whole story revolves around that point of view and is told from that point of view. I think we're going to start moving away from this, and it is a... Um, because the medium is so young that we reassure ourselves by adopting the subjective point of view. But I think we're going to start maturing from this and we're going to move uh, towards other points of views which will be more la freer like what we have in uh, cinema. Um, an interesting relationship is the position of the viewer, I mean the physical position of the viewer, when he or she is watching a VR story, we will find that there's going to be a sense of more and more parallel between the movements or the positions that I take in the physical world while I'm watching the VR experience and what happens in the VR world. Just to give you an example, there's a lot of talk right now about what we call room scale. Room scale is when you, through mostly photogrammetry, and that cannot be done yet fully in live action filming, but it can be done in CGI, in animation. It's when if I hold um, an object in, in front of me in VR, and if I come closer to the object physically, indeed, in VR, I will also come closer to the, to the object. Right now, when I move closer to the object physically, 
the object moves away from me, the bubble in the heart of which I am um, moves with me, the whole thing. So that creates a lack of real, uh, of, of sense of reality uh, because it's, it does not correspond. This is something that's going to happen. And therefore, my position, whether I'm sitting, standing, lying down, when I'm watching a VR experience, will start making a difference because we will want to feel that we are very close to the same position that we have in the VR experience. And we're going to start seeing more and more um, VR experiences which will play between what I'm doing and feeling in the physical world while I'm watching the VR experience and what is happening to me, to my virtual self when I am inside the, the virtual sphere. So to, to end on a more general note, um, I... I think it's important to understand that whether we like it or not, VR is going to be a major disruptive part of our future. Um, there's so much money that is being invested by the Hollywood studios, by the hardware and software makers, not to mention the social networks. When Facebook is going to start to roll out sometime this year its services in VR, people will become more and more familiar with VR, will want to start buying headsets massively and will start using um, their own videos and uh, the services that Facebook is going to provide through which we will be able to meet up up to five people at a time through our avatars online in a VR environment. When all that starts happening, um, it's not going to be any more a question of whether VR is going to happen or not, but how fast, how soon it's going to happen. Some predictions say that uh, by 2021, 2022, there's a fair chance that the disruptive interface we will be using will no longer be the smartphone, but will be a pair of glasses. And as technology evolves, the headsets that are right now clumsy and big and uncomfortable will start um, becoming smaller, easier to use and more comfortable. And we will soon, all of us, be carrying glasses in our pockets. The keyboards are going to um, live their last years. We will not be using keyboards in eight years from now. We will all be using a new sign language, which resembles very much the um, minority report uh, vocabulary, hand vocabulary that Tom Cruise uses in the film. All of that is going to happen. So whether you are a film fan, and I am one, I love flat films, um, they're going to still be around. If you do not want to change uh, and keep your focus on flat films, VR will be uh, in your environment, will be in your life. I think it is worth checking it, it's worth learning about it, it's worth being aware of its problems, visual problems, what does it do to our eyes, you know, to have screens so close, addiction, isolation issues will raise from uh, the use of VR, but it's also an amazing tool for education, for health, not just for telling stories. So this is, I guess, the reason why um, we're talking about this today. And um, I wish you a wonderful end of the day and um, hope to see you around somewhere on the VR planet. Thank you.